A couple of weeks ago, I published two videos about MPEG H, which ended up being fairly popular. Now, in case you have no idea what the MPEG H is, this is an audio format that can be considered an alternative to Dolby Atmos. The unique thing about MPEG H is that it has been developed by the same group that also developed MP3, the Fraunhofer Institute. Following these videos, we had a robust discussion on my Discord server about the benefits of MPEG H over Dolby Atmos. And I felt it makes sense to talk about these topics with the source directly. And that's why we invited Yannick Greve from the Fraunhofer Institute onto our podcast to talk about MPEG H. The following is an edited down version of the conversation Sam Hawking and I had with Yannick in the January episode of our podcast, Spatial Audio Monthly. If you're interested in the full discussion, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. You might want to check that out. It's actually a really interesting episode. And with that being said, let's turn it over to Yannick Greve and uh, MPEG Edge. Can, can you introduce yourself? What, what are you doing at Fraunhofer? As you already said, my name is uh, Janik Rive. I'm working in, uh, at the Fraunhofer Institute for Integrated Circuits based in Erlangen in Germany, in the northern part of Bavaria. And we are, uh, yeah, we are an institute. We're actually the biggest institute uh, of the Fraunhofer, uh, yeah, the Fraunhofer Society. And we are working on uh, everything related to audio. So that means audio codecs, especially. So this is something we started, uh, yeah, 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago, starting with MP3 and all the successes of MP3. And now we're in the fourth generation of audio codecs. And this is where I'm mainly working on um, for MPEG-H audio. So I used to be a, yeah, a sound engineer I'm coming from productions. Um, starting to do research more than 10 years ago on yeah, immersive audio and re reproduction technologies or actually starting with uh, microphone systems for, uh, yeah, for, for production of, uh, of immersive audio and yeah, doing developments in that regard and also in signal processing. And yeah, just recently I'm, uh, I'm yeah, working more on the yeah, market deployment and business development and yeah, trying to spread the word on MPEG H and bring in it, bringing it more into the market and yeah, have the, give the people the chance to enjoy personalized immersive audio. Before we continue the discussion, let me briefly talk about the sponsor of this video, which is me. If you find the videos on this channel interesting, please consider subscribing and also don't forget to press the like button. It really helps out the channel. And I'm now also accepting memberships either through the YouTube membership program or through Patreon. There are a couple of different tiers you can choose from. And at the highest tier, we're going to have monthly live video chats with all the members and me where you can ask me all kinds of questions and you can ask me for advice. And I would like to use this opportunity to give a shout out to our awesome new members, Ben47G, Philip Borsch, and I'm sorry, I probably butchered your name, and most importantly, our new third order member, Niklas Gustafsson. Thank you so much for your support. It's really appreciated. And with that being said, let's turn it back to Yannick Greve and uh, MPEG H. And that brings us to MPEG H, uh, and that's why you're here. Can you tell us a little bit what is MPEG H uh, and uh, how did it come about? Yeah, so MPEG H is actually the the uh, a codec or actually audio system in the fourth generation of audio codecs from Fraunhofer IIS. So as I said, we started decades ago with MP3. That was the first generation. Then it the successor AAC, Advanced Audio Coding. I guess less people have heard about that compared to MP3, but probably uh, equal amount of people using it, probably without knowing, but. Um, so that's I also AAC. didn't know that either that, that, that's, like, that that's coming from Fraunhofer. I, I was not aware of that for some reason. AAC. Yeah, yeah A cool. exactly. Advanced audio coding. And then the third generation of that is then high efficiency advanced audio coding, which is uh, also in, in uh, yeah, billions of devices. And now we're in the fourth generation. And among others, there's MPEG-H, but there's, for, for example, also the successor of HEAAC, which is called Extended High Efficiency AAC, XHEAAC. So what is MPEG-H? So MPEG-H is, uh, yeah, not only an audio codec, where in the past it was all about data reduction. Now um, we are talking about a full audio system, actually. And MPEG-H brings compared to, let's say, the old audio codecs or traditional audio codecs, three big advantages. And the first one is um, immersive sound. So 
So this is something we have heard already. So I guess most of the people are familiar with immersive sound. And this is, of course, including not only a surround layer, um, but also adding a height. And when we are talking about height, we're not only talking about like positive elevation, we're also talking about negative elevation. Um, so that means floor level sound, for example. So this is something MPEG-H can support. And when we're talking about layouts, um, yeah, in MPEG-H, this is quite flexible. So we are not only focusing a single, uh, let's say, channel-based or loudspeaker layout, but we have hundreds of different layouts which are possible. And this, uh, yeah, let's say this opportunity of immersive sound, this can be carried out in, in different ways in MPEG-H. And the first one is pure channel-based. So this is what we all know, where yeah, each channel is represented by a loudspeaker signal. Then we do have object-based audio, and this is also something I will talk in a second. So basically, audio elements with metadata, and we also have scene-based audio or ambisonics. And this is all, all of those three are supported in MPEG-H or a combination of all of those three. And so that was the first big advantage or yeah, the difference of, of MPEG-H. The second one is personalization. And this is something where we think is the big yeah, so, yeah, the, the big advantage of MPEG-H audio, since what I already mentioned with channels and objects, we do um, can allow uh, the user to personalize the audio experience. And this is all under control by the content creator and defined in metadata. And that means that, yeah, for example, we can increase the dialogue of, um, let's say, drama series compared relatively compared to the background that means better speech intelligibility when we think about today um, you actually need to increase the volume of the whole let's say the whole uh, mix but that does not improve the speech intelligibility with mpeg -H. you can only increase the dialogue for example or you can uh, have advanced uh, audio description for yeah let's say accessibility uh, accessibility uh, purposes, but of course we can go in much more creative ways. For example, we can allow the users to enable or disable a preferred commentator in a sports match, or we can have, for example, um, let's say uh, in a car race, the users could switch on the team radio in order to let uh, let them listen to uh, the communication between the crew and the driver. So these are all. Yeah, possibilities you can do with MPEG-H and it's only, let's say, the creative uh, possibilities you can explore are, yeah, are endless. And then um, the third big advantage, so going back, immersive sound personalization, the third one is what we are calling the universal delivery. And that means um, we are not um, focusing on the several productions, like producing for the various reproduction layouts and regions and uh, different versions of a mix, but we can actually use the channel-based and object-based approach to make sure, plus metadata, of course, to ensure that on the end consumer device, the best possible sound quality will always be rendered. And this is achieved by having a very sophisticated renderer and the receiving device who knows what's coming in and who knows about the possibilities of the reproduction layout. And then this renderer applies all the audio processing to make sure that uh, no information gets lost. There's no, let's say, comp filtering or energy, uh, energy wire variations when you do a rendering to a, to a lower loudspeaker layout, for example, from an immersive mix to stereo. But you can also, for example, have uh, binaural rendering um, on the end consumer device. So we can always ensure based on the availability of the end consumer that this one mix a producer is doing is sounding in the best way um, possible for the various reproduction layouts. So as I said, it's, it's not only a codec itself and of course the, uh, the, the data reduction. So the algorithm to reduce a bit rate is the best one in the market. Um, but it's based on that ground, it's even possible to have more and more features, which makes it an audio system rather than an audio codec. 
you know, kind of in in uh, in the music space, um, everything is Dolby Atmos right now, right? Essentially, kind of there's all this talk about Apple requiring people to submit in Dolby Atmos and things like that. Um, why should people use Ambic Age? Uh, as opposed to Dolby Atmos. So what's 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 your take on that? Or how do you see the relationship with Dolby Atmos? Let's put it that way. I mean, uh, of course, on the, on the one hand, uh, yeah, there's Dolby Atmos out there for the music industry, um, but there's also 360 reality audio out there for the music industry. And it's according to, uh, let's say, user's preference or labels or whoever is deciding in which format to produce. I think this is a, the decision of all the producers out there. Um, when it comes to the benefits of MPEG H um, over Atmos, I mean the and as you already said, the big advantage of that is um, the personalization aspect. And if you don't want to go into the personalization aspect, only the uh, the codec itself, that means the algorithm for data reduction, is already uh, yeah quite significantly better in MPEG H than in Atmos. Knowing what immersive sound, especially, and also object-based audio can actually deliver and what for a quality of audio experience you can achieve with that, that then it's always, for me, also quite frustrating, honestly, when listening to, listen to for example, Atmos on, on Apple Music, because there are so much uh, yeah, songs out there, which honestly, for my, but my personal opinion is that they are really not well mixed. So sometimes I have the feeling that people just, when they deliver a mix, they just need to check mark the box on delivered in Atmos. And this might be produced as, I don't know, with some up mixing tools or I have no idea how it being produced, but at least from the production or from the, from the quality of the mix itself, this is something which I would personally not see a benefit for immersive audio, knowing how immersive audio can actually sound like with a proper, let's say, listening environment with a proper mix um, and this is something where I personally hope that um, the mass market being capable one day to really also being able to uh, yeah, enjoy the, the possibilities of immersive sound rather than what's being currently being mainstreamly used. There's one thing that I wanted to kind of talk about at the end, and that is sort of what is the future of MPEG H? And uh, and you mentioned to me something uh, that's called MPEG I. So maybe you can also allude on that a little. What that is? I mean, of course, future of MPEG H is uh, is uh, first of all that we are also targeting uh, streaming and broadcast industry, and we want to personalize the audio experience for a lot of people out there. And but of course, also in MPEG, um, there's always an, in, an involvement. Uh, sorry, in in, in improvement of, uh, of technologies and development of, of, uh, um, uh, of uh, standards. And MPEG-H, of course, is not the last standard um, done in MPEG. So the next one is called MPEG-I. And MPEG-I is especially targeting uh, six degrees of freedom or VR and AR application or XR application. Um, the good news is the base on that is actually, again, MPEG-H audio. So MPEG H audio being part of MPEG I uh, with an enhanced uh, metadata set and with an enhanced renderer. And that especially is targeting, for example, as I already mentioned, let's say a six degrees of freedom application uh, where you can have a, a rich set of metadata for, uh, let's say, in the acoustic environment. So you can define objects uh, inside, let's say, a, a space or in, an, in a virtual environment and then also have acoustic properties, which are set in metadata. And then when people are moving in a, let's say in a six degrees of freedom um, environment and they hide behind an obstacle inside a room, then the audio signal of being rendered and transmitted in this room is being also considered as, you know, uh, the acoustical environment and the obstacle is, is then taken into account while the signal is being rendered. So it's a very sophisticated, um, audio technology for yeah six degrees of freedom ar xr applications and so on this is everything for today once again if you're interested in the full discussion that we had with yannick i encourage you to check out our podcast spatial audio monthly link is in the description below and with that being said see you at the next video